Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing part 3 of our Road to 2K guide. This time playing against an opponent called Purple Nurple, who's actually uh, from our home country of Canada, so that's cool. Uh, he's also rated 1678 and he's got just around 300 games played, so definitely a very solid opponent. For this episode, my focus is to talk about scouting, uh, how to defend against early game rushes, and just how to deal with aggression in general. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with uh, the series so far, I'm basically going to do uh, one live game every episode uh, and just show you guys exactly what I'm thinking about and where my actions go. However, every fifth episode, I've decided to do a uh, rec review uh, episode where I'll play two games off, uh, off cam and then I'll uh, watch the recordings over uh, for the YouTube and uh, that will be every fifth episode. The rest will be one game live and uh, standard format. Uh, but enough talking, let's just hop right into this game. All right, so just kind of thank him for his patience here because he definitely uh, waited quite a bit for me to get the intro out of the way and also to pick a good map for uh, for both of us here. Uh, so shouldn't be any problems here, just gonna double check. Yeah, it looks like we're all good. And uh, let's hop right into this game. Uh, so depending on what uh, what save I will get, I'm gonna be either going archers or scouts. Uh, I'm gonna save the men at arm rushes till later on. So probably around like 1700. Uh, let's get right into it here. So I end up getting Britons here, so right away I'm thinking Drush is good, Men at Arms is good, uh, but also Straight Archers is perfectly fine, so uh, for, again, for the purpose of just doing a simpler build order, we're going to just roll with Straight Archers, but I'll also talk about how to actually defend against Men at Arms if they come our way, alright? I'm just going to get through my start here, uh, scouting with sheep as uh, per usual here. I like to just scout with two sheep right off the bat, uh, but then I'll send one back relatively quickly, because I don't want to have my sheep run out and not have another one to replace it, so... I don't want to get carried away, but one can scout a little bit long. At this point, I'm going to check his skiv. He's got Aztecs, so I could actually expect some early men at arms. So why don't we actually go ahead and uh, show you guys how to defend against men at arms or any early game rush that comes our way, uh, you know, if he decides to go for it. We are Britain, so all I need is 5 on sheep, because they do have that sheep gathering bonus. If you guys aren't familiar with the civs, feel free to take a look at the tech tree mid-game. Uh, I'll obviously pause and take a look at it, but um, if you guys are familiar with them, then that's perfect. And make my lumber camp. The reason I'm choosing this wood line is just because, yes, it's far, but at least it's at the back. This one's at the front, and it's quite far as well. I'm right, gonna grab my sheep. Just doing standard scouting things as per usual here. Uh, I try to keep my scout in uh, going in like kind of an arc formation, and the goal is just to never run across path that, paths that you've already scouted before. So I'm not gonna run through my base. I'm gonna go around just to get as you know, just to maximize the scouting. Uh, that my scout can actually get here. Alright. So again, I'm not going to go through here again. I'm just going to go back around. And that way, I'm really just maximizing the amount of surface area my scout covers uh, in this early game. There you go. Okay. Fair enough. So, four on wood. This is a standard archer builder. Again, it could also be uh, men at arms. It could be a drush. Uh, but like I said, we're going to keep those a bit more complex builders um, for a bit later on in the series. Alright, so I'm bringing in my board, and my next villager will make a house. I like to make it close to my uh, berries, I don't know if I talked about this. So that way, after I make my house, that villager can also just make the mill right away. I'm gonna lower this board in. hopefully a nice one. Looks good. Yep. Alright, fantastic. And I'm still looking for two more of my sheep, so I'm not gonna rush to, uh, to go find my opponent right now. Let's just continue scouting with sheep. Got his eagle here, so let's be careful. There we go, and then when he's done that house, he can just jump straight to the berries. No big deal there. Okay, I can't use that sheep to scout because I did see his eagles in the uh, in the area, so I have to be a little bit careful. He might have taken my sheep. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, we can switch to uh, red and blue colors here. I don't know which which uh, which ones you guys prefer. You guys prefer standard colors or um, team colors? Uh, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments uh, down below. Alright, so my next boar is really far. You know what? I think we should go ahead and get a loom for this next one. Or I'm going to use my scout to block. I'll use my scout to block. If you guys aren't comfortable though, just feel free to go ahead and, uh, and get loom. It's not really uh, a big deal. I'd rather you guys get loom than lose villagers. Uh, but for, the guys, uh, for those of you guys who have, uh, you know, the ability to micromanage a little bit, you know, a little bit more than others, feel free to do what I'm doing here, which is just to block the boar with the scout. Helps with the long distance boars for sure. So you just continue blocking it. And middle at home, make sure you're getting the build down as per usual as well. 
could be a lot to manage, even for uh, even for me here. Gotta be careful. Fantastic. All right. I'm still missing my two sheep, so it's not a perfect uh, dark age uh, at all here. And my map is not looking great either. But the boar is coming in at uh, good times here. Very nice. Alright, so my next villager will just go over to the woodline. Uh, I'm already going to take a look at my map here. Notice how at this point in time, I'm not really doing a whole lot. So take the time to actually look around at your map and see what you know what you can do to properly protect it, right? Because that's your goal in the early game is just to protect your map and not take uh, that much damage. So right away, I'm thinking I'll probably do a second lumber camp here, wall off this side, and then put my buildings on the front. That way I protect my gold and my two woodlands are safe. And that does so much for me uh, for this early game here. I am down two sheep as well, so this is actually a pretty bad start for me. Let's see how I do to uh, to neutralize here. All right, 22 pop as per usual for an archer build. Again, if you're having trouble with builders, I recommend you look on uh, either my channel or others' channels for builders. You can find plenty of that content online, so uh, you know don't hesitate. You also have my uh, my Discord that has all of these builders that I use and several other pros use as well. Uh, so feel free to uh, use um, that resource as well. So five on each lumber camp, that is very standard stuff. Since I'm down two sheep, what I'm going to do is actually going to go ahead and seed one farm. Oh, he has eagle here. I'm going to put my barracks on the front as well. Gets me good vision. Normally I want to put it further away, but I don't like I don't really know um, if he has like a drush coming or anything like that. Because my scouting is quite poor. But what I will do is go ahead and wall up like I talked about. Alright, so now when it comes to scouting my opponent. With your scout, the idea is... The idea is you want to scout on places where the TC will not be. So again, on hills, this is a good place to scout. Near woodlands, that's a good place to scout. It's very important to do this if you don't want to lose your scout to the TC. So I'm not going to venture out here because the TC, okay, I see a hill, but the TC could be on flat land. That's just an important thing to keep in mind. All right, now I'm going to move out here and uh, go ahead and try and get my ranges down, but I'm going to bring my scout back. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, I have no scouting this map. I, I was too late. I made a mistake, I didn't have good scouting. The way to counteract this is just to play a bit more defensive, honestly. Let's play defensive and let's expect the worst. Let's expect a mana arm uh, rush, perhaps even a forward. So I see his eagle here, maybe building scan. And uh, let's go ahead and kill his eagle now with our scout. Let's go ahead and drop two ranges. I actually forgot to go ahead and take gold, but I'll do that right now. <clears throat> Again, this is not the best start at all. But we'll see uh, the rest of the game how it plays out. Let's go ahead and get a mining camp on the gold. It can be quite tricky to make it on the hill. I think that's okay. He's still in... Okay, he's in the feudal age, actually. Gonna skip on horse color. Actually, let's go ahead and get it. It's fine. Sometimes I like to skip it for the men arm builds, but for uh, archer builds, it's actually fine to get it. I'm gonna send uh, bills to gold here. So exactly like the build in my Celt video. Or my last uh, guide video. And let's go ahead and just start creating some archers now. And wall off our map. So I see a spearman right away coming out. Interesting. Let's continue farming as well. Alright, so what am I thinking right now? So I don't have really good scouting at all. So the way to, like I said, counteract this is just I'm going to defend my map until I'm ready to, you know, potentially move out or look to gather more information with my, with my scout. For the time being, I want to keep my scout defensively in case something comes my way. Because if it comes my way, I'd rather have that extra unit to defend. Again, it was really a bad start for me being down those resources, the two sheep. And having pretty much no scouting of my opponent. So again, I'm just going to defend the one area of my base that's the most vulnerable. The wood, like I said, is, is safe. I've walled it off. If he comes to around here, I would see him so I could react. But if he comes through here, it's on the front. I won't have time to react. So I need to keep my army here. And I'm just going to continue uh, going along the, the regular archer build here. Again, I'm not doing anything crazy. And now I have three archers. Let's go ahead and move out and see what my opponent is doing. I'm fine. If a mana arm rush comes now, I'll be able to defend it. I see a spearman there. No big deal. Get my blacksmith house. Very nice. And right now, I'm just focusing on getting my farms up. I've got eight on gold. Plus this guy, it's eight. Perfect stuff for a, an archer build at this time. It's all about getting farms down now and looking to go for the castle age. So take a look at my map here. I've got one gold on the front. From main gold on the front, two stones on the map uh, on the front as well. It looks like he's going for a range to start off this one. Interesting. So now I have to determine if he's going to go archers or skirmishers. And I'm going to continue while I'm on my map. Could hit this villager if I wanted to. I want the scouting information though right now. This episode is about scouting. Let's go ahead and get that information. Right. Again, always make sure you're cre constantly creating fills at home. Alright, what can I see here? 
nice play from him. Gotta be careful. Good stuff. That was actually very, very clever. And let's see if he's walled on the left side. Again, I'm just trying to gather as much information. I already see the range, so I know exactly what he's going to go for. Uh, some sort of range unit. Okay, I see two wood lines. And I don't really see him on gold. So he's going to go for some skirmishers. That's very interesting. So he's going to go skirmishers. How do I react to skirmishers now? I have an option. I could add my own skirmishers. But an option I like a little bit better is to go for a stable. And I think at, at this time, it's a good time to go for a stable. I like to do it at the back of my base, so it's kind of hidden, so I'll do it here. Alright. Just getting some damage done. Uh, again, I'm not moving out just because I don't really know what he's up to. Um, I, I want to be safe, right? My map is quite bad. If my map is good and I'm walled, of course I would move out. But of course, you know, for this particular game, that's not the case. Uh, when my berries are out, let's go ahead and take some deer. Two, and then one of them. Oh. The farm. Okay, so I see the skirmishers now. Alright, so now I can move out. I see his army. It's actually perfectly safe to move out. He's got only skirmishers, so I'm going to need to make a stable now in order to transition and counter what he has. And again, I only know he's ma making skirmishers because I scouted him. And if I did not scout him with my with my scout there, I'd have no way of knowing until he was at my base, which is would be way too late. Alright? So I'm not going to dive too deep with my archers because he does have the skirmishers and he has a very good map. So let's just camp in the middle of the map. And let's, uh, I have to explain something here, alright? Let's go ahead and pause. So right now, what I know is he's got skirmishers. He has an almost fully walled map. So he's in a better position than me. He also has Aztecs, which is a very good 1v1 Arabia Civ. Great economy, um, just an all-around solid Civ. So now my, my thinking is I have my stable. I have the counter for skirmishers, but I still can't really attack him. So the only way for me to get a winning Feudal Age out of this is for him to make the mistake because he is in a perfect position right now. So his mistake that I think he will do is move out with the skirmishers and not expect me to have scouts. So I will sit in the middle of the map. I have got vision around my base. As soon as I see his skirmishers, I will make three scouts and completely clean up his army. I'll keep my archers around in case he mixes in some spears or eagles to help out. And uh, once he makes that mistake, which I'm pretty sure he will, uh, that's going to be how we're going to win Feudal Age. All right. And after that, we can move out and try to you know break walls and stuff. All right, so that's going to be my game plan going for this mid-feudal age. Again, I'm thinking about yes. all the possibilities uh, of you know what's going to happen. I'm thinking of where I can do damage and if I can. And the conclusion is the only way for me to win feudal age is for me to just defend. So again, let's just defend here. Hide my scouts, very important. And let's wait for some mistakes. Here's a small mistake. Wasting potentially an eagle if I can kill it. <laughs> Can't really. I have to hide my scout. Got it. All right, very nice. At this point, these guys should be making farms. Very nice. And then after this villager, I'll look to click up. Again, I'm still making archers. Uh, sorry, click wheelbarrow, not click up. Not quite yet. I'm still making archers, but I'm mixing in three scouts. I don't want to overcommit on the scouts, but I'm mixing out three, maybe even four. Depends how I'm feeling. Alright, these guys are just picking up some deer as well. And there it is. He walked right into me. I didn't even catch it. There's the mistake, guys. There is the mistake. And now I'm making a small mistake. Keep my archers around. Let's move out. Oh, I did a split there. I wasn't supposed to. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, there it is. And I had the scouts in the perfect position, middle of the map, exactly from his path or from his base to my, to my base. If he was going to attack me, he had to take this path or he would have to sneak all the way around. So again, scouts perfectly positioned. This is not something you need any micro to do. You just have to use your band a little bit. And now I can attack because he made the mistake. Now it's my turn to capitalize it and to actually move out and look to do some damage. All right. I see barracks, so I'm just looking like he might do an ego transition. Let's bait the spearman. And now archers will hit the spearman. And then uh, I would just look to. I'm not gonna micro, I'm, I'm just gonna focus on other stuff. But I will hit the spearman. Alright, at home. And make sure my production is always good. That's the main thing. No matter what I'm doing outside, get into the habit. I'm always looking at my base, looking around what, what could I do. This could be a good time right now as well. Let's get that spearman. And I'm not going to overcommit now. I've, I've done the damage. He did a tower. I don't have to really dive in or anything like that. What I could do though, is look for some damage on the on this side. You know, I have an army, I might as well use it. And uh, now I'm going to look to click up to the next stage. Very nice. So clicking up at a decent time here. And uh, I, oh, I still got some archers being queued all the time. Get my gold, up, gold upgrade, as you guys know. And now uh, any farm that runs out, I'm going to send it to uh, the wood line. Looks like he's doing a tower there. Interesting. Alright, so I'm not going to be able to get any damage here. So what I will do is just kind of camp around his base and try and just deny his gold. That's the most I can do. And that's fine. Get my upgrades here. 
Okay. As you can see, no crazy micro. Nothing, nothing really uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, if you did watch my micro videos on, uh, you know, unit formation, you'll know that I'm keeping my scouts and box formation on stand ground, and I'm keeping my archers on stand ground the whole time. But as far as any fancy slits, I mean, I did one of them this game, and honestly, that was just out of habit. I didn't really need to. Most, mostly skirmishers still, so not gonna force anything. Let's back out. Let's prepare a counter to skirmishers in the castle age now. I already have my one stable here, so I think that's gonna be enough. My plan is to go for crossbows for the main units. But I'm going to mix in a couple knights just to put the pressure on and deal with those pesky skirmishers, alright? So that's definitely my plan uh, for the castle age. As far as TCs go, remember when I said in this time you want to look for TC spots? I want to get one on an outside wood line. This looks pretty good. And one on a secondary gold. Uh, this looks very nice as well. I cannot TC here because there's hills. But this should be fine. So one here and one here. That's going to be my first step in the castle age uh, after I get all my upgrades, alright? So here I am. Castle Edge, grouping up my army, getting ready to make a play, getting get all my upgrades, gonna look for my TCs first, and then gonna look for the tower, yes. alright? So let's go ahead and get my TC here. Notice how I'm pulling up any villagers off the resource, it's no big deal. As long as I replace those villagers. Alright, I'm gonna make a few knights, uh, just a couple. Upgrades on the archers, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I have everything uh, researched, I, that might have went kind of fast. Uh, it's no big deal, you know, do this at your own pace. Just do it in the order that I mentioned. Make sure you have your economy set up and then look to attack. A lot of times what I see is people will try to attack and they would not have done their, with, like, their economy at home. So they end up they end up falling behind over microing, I like to call it. Alright. I'm going to do the same thing, snipe the spears with my archers. And with the scouts, just going to attack the skirmishers. Knights will be coming as well. Okay, let's just patrol here and focus up on our, our base here. Just look at, you know, stuff. Make sure people are, are working. And we'll tab back to our economy. So we're seeing another range come up. Two barracks, two ranges. Mostly skirmishers right now. So maybe we'll invest more into knights. That could be a good idea. Let's go ahead and get uh, armor. And let's start making a few more knights. Because he's got he's gonna he's gonna be making a lot of skirmishers. Let's patrol here. And again, notice I'm not watching a lot of my fights. That's a big thing you'll notice. I'm mainly a macro player. I like to focus on my economy. Make sure that's up to uh, speed. And then from time to time I'll look back. You can micro this if you want to. For the purpose of this video, I will not. I'm just going to focus on my economy. Very nice. Okay. And again, notice how my reinforcements, the gather point's going forward. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and go forward. Alright, and now when he makes a mistake, now I want to punish him in a big way, alright? He cannot stop my army no matter what he does. So let's just go ahead and run straight through the TC. And there's nothing he can do here. There's literally nothing he can do. And this is a play that no no uh, 1600 would do to run th through the TC. Um, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, right? Because you cannot stop my army, and the TC will kill max like 5 units when I run past. And now I could just kill all his villagers and his entire base, basically. And what, what, what crazy thing did I do this game? I can't really think of anything that was really uh, out of the ordinary. Mainly just keeping a clean economy at home, playing smart with my army, and not over committing at, at any point in the game. Just playing smart and reinforcing uh, when it's time to reinforce. And uh, <laughs> just saying GG question mark, up to you man. <laughs> GG. Alright. Alright, so the GG is called. Uh, thank you for the game. Let's be uh, respectful here. I really appreciate that. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, same. Very nice. Okay, so let's talk uh, quickly to recap the game and see what happened, what led to me winning, and what led to me not dying um, after that disaster of an early game start. Okay, so let's recap. So from the Dark Age, I had decent scouting of my map, but I was missing two sheep. In fact, he ended up taking the, taking them with his eagle. Uh, then I had a terrible map. I had all, a lot of my mines on the front, um, not, no gold in the back. My wood was far, uh, and I had hills everywhere. This is the typical crater map, right? We can all agree on that. However, somehow I was still able to survive any kind of early game uh, shenanigans that he might have th thrown at me. So he didn't go men at arms in this um, in this uh, game, but say he went men at arms, my plan would, would just be to defend with one one archer, one scout, and like four villagers. So if he comes to fight me, I'll have some units, and then the villagers can also fight off men at arms, uh, assuming that you run away the low HP vill. So you fight with villagers, he targets a villager, you run it away when it gets to like down to like 20, 30, 20 or ten HP. And that'll be fine. He didn't go for men arms. He went for archers. Uh, sorry, skirm opening. I made sure to scout it. Uh, and then I saw, you know, I've got archers. He's got skirmishers and a perfectly walled map 
My only way to win is to camp in the middle of the map, again, not in a random location, in the path that cuts off his base and my base. So from here to here, he passes through one important hill, which is this one, and that's where I camped, and you guys saw I wasn't even looking, and he ran straight into me, just because I was positioned properly. So again, I can't stress this enough that scouting and proper um, decision making will defend you and will keep you alive in the feudal age. Um, it is extremely hard to die to something that you know it's coming, unless the guy does some fancy micro, which I guarantee you will only lose you like 1 out of 10 games. So make sure to keep scouting and play smart, and I promise you they won't have any problems with these early game rushes. Or at least a significantly reduced uh, amount of problems. Uh, moving on to the cast stage, my plan was just to uh, mix in, or I did another play in Feudal, I mixed in scouts to counter the skirmishers, something to keep in mind, you want to scout, gain information, and then react based on that information. Uh, finally, in Castle Age, when I did get that big advantage in Feudal Age, I went to get an even bigger one in uh, Castle Age, and then when he lost all his army, that's when I decided to do the killer move, which is to run straight to the TC. A move that I don't see a lot of players doing, uh, especially at the lower levels, because it's not intuitive. You think, you know, it's the TCs there, I can't run through there, but if, we re if you really think about it, I lost maybe 5 units running th there, ended up having, what is that, like 25 or 30 in his base. So, again, weigh the risk and the reward, and you'll see that this is in fact a good play for me. And, uh, you know, something you guys should keep in the back of your mind, if you guys have gotten a great fight like this, remember I was not running in when I only got a couple good trades. I only ran in when I had a really, really good fight. Alright, so that's how you can end a game with absolutely no micro, with a bad map, and a bad start. Uh, one last thing I want to mention, that when I had the bad start, I kept my scout in a good position at home. I played defensive and I didn't try to uh, spread myself too thin, try to attack um, and kind of, you know, lose track of, uh, of you know, what my plan is. I played safe, stuck to the plan and ended up executing it uh, to a pretty good degree. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode here. Uh, any comments on it, just let me know uh, in the comment section below. If you guys liked the video, make sure to drop a like for me. Uh, and I appreciate it if you subscribe and, you know, stay tuned for the next episode. So that's it for me. Take care and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.